Hello everyone, I am Ashish Shukla from product management team and working in meter solutions and related applications. So today I will show you how to do the configuration of SGG adapters and how to perform the test harness of various commands like on-demand read, remote connect, remote disconnect or device status check or etc. So these are the various key sections during SGG configuration which you need to configure it properly before initiating any commands either for test harness or for any implementation. So let's go to the individual section and we can also see the details of various configuration components for those sections. So let's begin with activity type which defines the main attributes broad range of command activities like device commissioning, device decommissioning, remote connect, remote disconnect device status check etc so let's move to the application where we can see the activity type you need to go to admin menu then communications and then activity type and please make sure that all the command activities must be configured in the activity type section so here this is the activity type where you can see the each command has been configured it like device commissioning device decommissioning device deregistration device status check, disable service, enable service, exchange meter. So all those activities or command activities you need to perform it for any adapters you need to configure it as a part of activity type. So let's go to the one of the activity type where we can see their major parameters we need to configure it. So in the device commissioning activity type you can see the status which should be active then activity expiration days, then measurement expiration days and then exception handling where we can see the retry frequency that is nothing but every one hour and then maximum retries that is three. So these are the major components need to configure it for activity type for individual commands. Now let's move to the second section that is communication type which defines the information either to receive messages from any external system or send the messages to any external system. So in brief we can say the communication flow is either inbound type or outbound type. So we need to configure each command as a inbound type or outbound type as per the nature of individual command. So let's move to the communication type we can see it in the application. So here go to admin menu then communication and then communication type. So here you can see the communication type for each command for each adapters. So here you can see this is for itron adapter and these are the individual commands has been configured for individual adapter for like itron like commissioning command and this is for DR direct route or that is nothing but your cloud services and this is a SOA based or on premise. So you need to configure it individually if you have both or as per your application need. Then contingency read for interval, then contingency read for scalar, <clears throat> then decommissioning of meter, load side voltage, disconnect meter results, disconnect meter results SOA based. So individual commands you need to configure it for individual adapters. So let's see the components for communication type. So these are the major parameters you need to configure it under communication type that is like communication flow that is nothing but your outbound. So you need to be checked that what communications or communication type of that particular command you have either it's a inbound or it's a outbound of nature. Then communication expiration days, that is right now it's 7 days. Then the exception handling. Here the retry frequency is 20 minutes and the maximum retry is 10. Okay, so now let's move to the third activity or section that is nothing but your message sender. So as we know, the system supports the ability to make web services calls, that is sending real-time messages to an external system. So for real-time messages, the system uses like outbound message type and external system configuration to format and route the messages. So there is an additional step is required to define the mechanism for routing the message using message sender. So here the system supports routing messages via HTTP or via JMS. So let's move to the application side. We can see the message sender 
configuration go to admin menu then integration and then message sender then search for any individual adapters so right now I'm just searching for sensors so here this is a sensors uh, meters adapters where we need to configure it for individual commands so let's see for initiate connect disconnect direct route so direct route is nothing but your cloud services so here these are the major parameters for message sender so they have a two types one is the main tab another is the context so in the main tab the major component is that invocation type that is nothing but your real time another one is a message class where that is very important so right now it's for cloud services it's a SOAP SNDR that is nothing but sender for real time HTTP slash SOAP messages and if it is on-premise services or based on SOA it should be RT HTTP SNDR that is nothing but your real-time HTTP messages another one is a context page where you can see uh, various parameters need to configure it one is like HTTP header then HTTP user and then password then HTTP method and then HTTP URL so here HTTP header and HTTP URL is nothing but your visual actions and endpoints so right now uh, this is my uh, demo environment and I did all the testing with the help of QA test harness so here you can see the individual adapters configurations for visuals actions and endpoints for sensors for LNG for SSN for ITRON and all those adapters so if you will see for the sensors you will see the visual and endpoints are those one these are the servers okay and these are the SOAP actions for individual command so for commission for decommission those are the soap actions you need to mention it in the HTTP URL or header sorry HTTP header you need to mention the soap action as per their given uh, link and this is your visual or endpoint where you need to mention it in the HTTP URL so these are the unique things and or unique configurations which you need to refer it as per your environment because it I have done this testing for my QA test harness so that's the reason I just uh, referring the QA test harness you need to see which environment you are doing the testing and then you can collect the information of those applications so let's move to the next section that is nothing but your outbound message type so which defines a specific type of messages sent to an external system such as messages containing device command request and make sure that outbound message type must be configured for individual adapters or it should be present in the system so let's move to the outbound message type you can go admin menu then integration then outbound message type so here you can also see the outbound message type for individual adapters see here like this is for sensors DC6 sensors communication sensors initiate connect disconnect command sensors device commissioning so all those commands they have configured the outbound message type so just click on one so this is for sensors device decommissioning where the major parameters are like this is the outbound message BO which is very much important and then priority these are the major parameters while configuring the outbound messages N next move to the another section that is nothing but your external system so external system uh, you can say which represent the external applications with which the SGG will exchange messages or data okay so let's see the external system in the application itself you go to admin then integration and then external system here you can also need to configure it for individual adapters so here this is for sensors I have just configured it and here you can configure the outbound messages for individual commands so here you will see the outbound messages for or the commands like commission then connect disconnect device decommissioning and here you will see the configuration of external system in outbound message type then 
processing method that is the real time you also need to configure the message sender in here in outbound message under external systems and then date time format is OUAF for uh, cloud services and the most important is the message XSL and the response XSL so for standard adapters which Oracle has supported they have already created the request XSL and response XSL okay and but if you have any generic adapter then the Oracle also provided the DG slash request dot XSL or DG slash response dot XSL which you can use it so I will just show you here so DG is for generic adapters you can see the request XSL and response XSL of DG so you can use other other the adapters which Oracle not supports so here you can configure it the external systems then these are the major parameters next go for other section that is head end system which represents the external entities that serves various processing rules to the application let's go to the head end system in application you need to go admin menu then device and then head end system then you need to configure the individual head end system for individual adapters so just see one of the adapters head end system here you can see a major components of head end system is that you need to configure the external system you need to map external system from head end system then you need to mention the name of our, our system then the major parameter is that the AMI device ID type so whenever you will upload any meter reads or payloads upload you need to mention that which AMI device ID you need to refer it either you can use serial number or either you can use device ID or pallet number or badge number whatever so you need to configure it accordingly then AMI measuring component ID type is channel ID and the date time format you need to mention it so right now I just mentioned with time zone and the most important parameters you need to configure the under the head end system is the processing methods so processing methods define the format or means by which head end system receives or sends data from or to the applications so processing methods can also be used to define how command requests are sent to the head end system so this is used for commands as well as the payloads for both so here you can see that we have uh, configured for device removal device registration device status check for individual commands we have to configure it so if you want to see for any individual command like device connect you can see the major configurations under processing method so here the status is active and the default business object is this one initiate connect disconnect DR for D6 for sensors and the default outbound message type so these are the two things which you need to configure it under uh, processing methods okay uh, then let's go to the another section that is nothing but your master configuration which enables an implementation to define configuration for features in the system so let's go to the master configurations which is under admin menu and then general then master configuration so here you need to configure the master configuration for individual adapter so here we have configured it for sensors master configuration here you can see the major components the major components is like default response URL which is nothing but your application URL please mention this one so that the system or, or the external system will take the reference of particular response URL so these are the major master configurations or these are the major configurations for uh, SGG configurations uh, so let's go to one of the uh, device where we can perform or initiate the command as a in in the test harness so let's go with one of the device where we can perform the test harnessed search for serial number so I will show you uh, how the test harness works after this configuration 
you can go to the device then you can go to the device portal so this is your device which is nothing but your census meter and there is a device activities so you need to initiate the command so let's do the test harness for a particular device to initiate any available commands so i will show you the one example for this one so these are multiple commands which supports that particular adapter so let's do the device status check so i will give you an example how to do the test harness for device status check so parallelly you can use or you can do for other commands also so i will just give you this example so just go with the device status check we'll see that whether that device is enable or whether this device is connected or not so we can see the details of this so let's go to device status check and then click on save so here you can see the communication in progress we can just refresh it see that meter communicated confirmed device is connected device is functionally correctly so this is nothing but your uh, device status check command usually it will complete it uh, but uh, as this is a demo environment and might be there are some reason that some to do's are open so that activity is not completed but our main objective to do the test harnessed it has been completed okay that we can found that meter communication has been confirmed device is connected and device functioning correctly so similarly you can perform the same test harness for other commands also like on demand read or you can do for remote connect remote disconnect so you can perform whatever you want so here if you will see the device activities here you can see the execution completion events so so this is the sdg configurations and the test harness so i think that will definitely help you to perform the test harness as well as the configurations of any adapters so thank you and good luck